Hey everyone, today I'm going to run you through a quick comparison of several DIY alcohol stoves that I've made. Um, if you've ever Googled alcohol stoves, you've probably run across this website called zenstoves.net. And because there are so many different possible designs of these kinds of stoves, I'm only going to focus on the six main types that they talk about there, and I've got an example of each right here in front of me. So we'll run through them one by one. Um, as we're going through, I'm going to flash some st stats up on the screen about their boil times and things like that. Just so you know, all of the boil times were done with the GSI Pinnacle Duelist Pot, and all times were done with one half ounce of fuel, and two cups of tap water. Uh, the tap water is probably about 65 degrees. So we'll run you through each stoves and kind of talk about how it works, what's good and what's great about them, and give you a brief rundown of how each one's built. So hope you enjoy it. Okay, first up is the open flame stove, which is just a vessel that holds burning fuel and a stand to hold your pot up. You can't get much simpler than that. Um, this particular one I've made, uh, well I didn't really even make it, this is just an old candle tin. Um, once all the wax was burned out from the candle, just cleaned it out and there's a burner. Set three nails in it, kind of tripod style, and you've got a stove. Um, let's have a quick look at the flame pattern on that. So you can see it has a pretty small flame, um, pretty weak flame, which uh, is why it has such a long boil time. Uh, that's the main drawback with this stove is it's just so slow. But it does run completely silent and it works with any size pot, uh, small or large diameter. And as you can see, very easy to make. So that there is the open flame stove. Next up is the chimney stove. The way these work is you have your fuel inside and they suck air through these side holds and burns the flame at the top. So it kind of gets good air fuel mixture so it burns much faster than if these holes weren't here and it was just like an open flame stove. Um, the way I've made this one is with two bottoms of uh, the small five and a half ounce cans and one bottom is the main stove here and then one other one just gets pressed in here and cut a hole in it and that's that. The way I, you can do a hardware cloth pot stand around it, I've just drilled some holes in here and uh, got the 16 penny nails going again. So let's give you a quick look at the flame pattern on this guy. So you can see it has a really tall flame. Um, it works really well with, again, any large or small diameter pots. It doesn't really make much of a difference. Um, pretty good kind of all around stove. It has decent boil times, decent weight, pretty good performance. Uh, runs totally silently. The main drawback of it is that that tall flame is very sensitive to the wind. So a windscreen is a must have on this or you'll probably never boil your water because it just blows that flame a little bit off to the side and it misses your pot and that's that. But one thing about this stove that's really unique as far as all these stoves is it's very easy to actually control the output of it. You just make a little sleeve like this and if you restrict airflow into these holes it'll make the flame quite a bit smaller. So this little sleeve I've made here it just kind of pinches onto the pot there, or onto the stove that is, and if you slide it up to about there, you're at kind of a midway simmer, and if you cover the holes completely, you're at a full simmer, and it'll just have a smaller flame coming out. So if you like to cook, this, um, this is definitely the stove for you. If you're just into boiling water, that probably doesn't make much difference. But anyway, there is the chimney stove. Next up is the low pressure side burner, which I've got the infamous Super Cat stove here. Give you a quick look at the flame pattern on this guy. So you can see that the this one is its own pot stand. The pot goes right on top here, 
and that creates a low pressure field inside that forces the fuel out through these holes where it burns so you get a, a ring of small jets going around uh, very very easy stove to make you just get a little cat food can pull the lid off and get a hole punch and punch out some holes and couldn't be any easier than that so definitely a very easy stove to make um, gets pretty good performance um, the built-in pot stand is obviously really nice you don't have to worry about that uh, the main drawback with this stove is really this that it's a little bit fussy uh, to get the pot set on there the stove has to be totally totally preheated or else the pot will put the flames out and um, because it's a larger diameter this one only really works well with larger pots you can use it with the smaller ones you just won't get as good a performance but anyway that's the super cat stove an example of the low pressure side burner next up is the open jet type of stove this is the same as what a trangia is so you're probably pretty familiar with that um, made out of two cans once again one making the main body of the stove here and the other one turned upside down like this with the top cut out and then this one has an inner liner inside here so there's a small gap in here where the fuel is forced up and burns through these little jets on the top um, give you a quick look at the flame pattern on that so this stove um, does require a pot stand you can see I've kinda integrated one here with some bent over nails which works well because I can set them to uh, you know for a large diameter pot and then they can tuck away um, so that works real nice this is a very fast stove of all the ones this one will boil two cups of water um, in the fastest out of all the ones I'm going to show you today so that's awesome uh, a little bit more finicky to build because you got the inner lot wall in there not that tough but you know compared to the ease of doing like the super cat stove it's a little bit more of a pain um, but you get some benefits out of it for sure and that's the it's a very fast stove very high fuel capacity you can fill it up with well over an ounce of fuel if you need it um, it's not the most efficient burning stove because it burns so hot um, and because it puts out such a big flame works best with um, larger diameter pots but there's a look at an example of the open jet type of stove next up we have the hybrid side burner which is a lot like the open jet stove I just showed you once again made out of two can bottoms exact same stove really except the jets go around the sides instead of on the top here so like the super cat stove this stove is its own pot stand so I'll show you the flame pattern on it really quick so this is a nice little stove um, the built-in pot stand is great however this one um, if you just if you set a really cold pot on it if you have really cold water um, enough heat will leach out of the stove that will actually put the flames out but one way you can get around that which I've done here is to put some little I've got some little nails set in there which you can see make it so the pot just barely rests on these three nails instead of the rim of the stove and that uh, creates enough of a thermal block that the stove will keep running even if I put an ice cold pot on there but that makes it a little bit of a pain to build so keep that in mind if you're gonna build yourself one of these that you might want to do something to limit the contact area up here on the top um, and uh, other drawback is just lower fuel capacity because the jets are moved down here to the side and the way the can is concave in that way you can really only max this out at uh, three quarters of an ounce which works pretty well um, to get two cups of water boiling in the field but just something to keep in mind um, it's a good fast efficient stove and very popular this style lots of lots of guys carry something along this line but there is the hybrid side burner and last is the pressurized stove which this one is once again made out of two can bottoms just stick one inside the other and drill a little hole in the middle for your fuel port um, 
This is oftentimes called a penny stove because guys, to cover this fuel port, would you can just set a penny in there. Um, the fancier ones use a threaded rivet with a thumb screw. I've just got a piece of a nail cut off that just kind of sticks in there. But the way this stove works is you get it preheated and um, it pressurizes and forces fuel out the jets. I've got mine jetted on the inside rim there. And you plug that fuel port up in it so it builds up some pressure inside and shoots jets of burning fuel out. We'll give you a quick look at what the flame pattern looks like on that. So this stove performs pretty well. You know, it, it has a decent boil time um, and it works with any size pot. It actually has a nice little concentrated flame. The way the jets are positioned, they kind of all focus in one area, which makes a nice hot flame and a very narrow flame for the smaller pots. But I'm not a huge fan of this style of stove. Um, you will need a pot stand to go separate with it, which I don't have one in front of me right now. But the thing I don't like about it is that it's just a little finicky. You've got to prime this uh, to get it to burn, or to even get it to light, really. Um, so you either have to have a little pan that you set it in and pour some alcohol around it to light it up. Um, lots of ones that you'll see guys put some kind of wicking material, a fireproof wicking material like carbon felt or fiberglass wick around the sides and you can just squirt some fuel on that and light it up. And that would make this a lot easier to use, but I don't have that stuff. And I'm just, you know, you have to wait like 30 seconds or more for this to prime. And in the in the field, I just don't think it's that dependable. Lots of guys like them, but for me, it's just not my favorite kind of stove. But anyway, that is the pressurized stove. Not too hard to make, but a bit of a pain to operate compared to the other ones where you pretty much light it and that's that. So lastly I'll just talk real quick about which of these stoves am I actually going to take out into the field with me. Um, the open flame stove is simply just too slow for me. Some guys use them. Um, I'm just not patient enough to use this so the open flame stove doesn't make it in my pack. The pressurized stove I kind of talked about it's just a little bit of a pain to prime and get started once it's started it works fine but I just am nervous about carrying this out in the fuel and just not being able to get it primed because it's too slow or I mean it's too cold out or something so I just don't think it's dependable enough for me the chimney stove I don't really if I'm going to take a stove like this I'm just going to be boiling water anyway so I'm not going to be cooking so the flame adjustability of it doesn't really factor in as a benefit for me there and then other than that it's a fine stove except I don't like how wind sensitive it is uh, even with a windscreen I'm just worried about the the flame getting blown off of the pot and just compared to the, some of my other options here it's a little bulkier so it's a fine stove, but I won't carry this one out on a trip with me anytime soon. These three guys here are the main contenders. Um, the Supercat stove, if I was going out and using my Dualist pot, I would definitely take this guy because it puts out a great flame pattern for that nice wide pot. But for solo use, and I'm using my GSI Minimalist, the flame pattern is just a little big. Um, it works, it'll boil water, but it's just not ideal. The nice thing about it is that it's so open, you put that in your pot, and you can it doesn't take up a lot of room. You can easily put fuel and, you know, bandana, your spoon, all that kind of stuff in there. So definitely a contender if I were going and cooking boiling water, say, for two people, and I have my bigger pot with me. But for solo trips, probably not going to take the Super Cat, but excellent stove and for how easy and cheap it is to make I mean it's just awesome can't beat that really so down to these two guys um, I just 
went over saying that I would take this Supercat stove if I was using my big GSI Duelist pot, um, which I may if I wanted to go for a more lightweight option, but really this guy here, um, although it's more of a pain to make since I've already got it made, um, it beats the Supercat in my opinion. Works really well for the wide GSI Duelist pot. I can set these up um, similar to like the I actually got the idea for this from the Optimus Svea 123 where it has little uh, pot supports like this that you slide in and out. But I can set it up really wide, put a frying pan on it, put a wide pot on it. I can set them up narrow if I'm doing a narrower pot and then they just kind of close away into a nice small package. But the speed of this stove is the reason I'm going to take it over the Super Cat. Uh, it'll boil water faster than any of these other ones and you just, I'm I'm not that patient of a guy. Some guys are, but I'm not. So this stove for sure, if I'm going to be cooking for two people or using my larger pot. It doesn't work very well on the smaller pot, my minimalist. So that's where this guy comes in. You guys saw me take this stove out um, in my last video, my trip up to Saren St. Vrain. But puts out a nice flame pattern for the small uh, GSI minimalist pot. It works just fine with the dualist pot too, but you know, like I said, I'm going to go for the higher heat output if I'm going to use that pot. But for the small one, I've gone ahead and put in the nails so the cold pot isn't an issue. Uh, if I didn't, before I thought of this idea to put little nails in here to make little standoffs, I couldn't stand this stove because it'll work fine. For, to do tap water at 65 degrees, but there's nowhere in the woods you're going to find 60 degree water. Um, especially up here in Colorado, most of the water was snow a couple days before you're drinking it or boiling it, whatever you're doing. So, as long as you get something going like this, this stove is a winner to make sure that the cold pot won't put it out. Um, so, I would say for solo trips, that there is my go-to stove. Two people, this guy right here. So anyway, I hope that was helpful for everybody. If anybody has any questions about any of these stoves, I'd be happy to help. Uh, thank you very much for watching.